Well, there you go. The last look at a collection of players before they become a team. Welcome, Bird Gang, to another episode of Cards Camp Central, powered by Cox. Craig Raylu, joined by Mike Jarecki here at State Farm Stadium. And MJ, training camp is officially over. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to allow us to turn out the lights. And what, what Cliff Kingsbury said, when the play's over, the party's over. And it's been a nice training camp, but I think everyone's looking forward to that opener in Santa Clara coming up on September 13th. Yeah, by all accounts, training camp ran much smoother than a year ago, but I think that was to be expected under the second year for head coach Cliff Kingsbury. And a lot of these players, including Kyler Murray, that core understood what was expected this time around and some good work was done even in the midst of all the different protocols that all the coaches and players had to deal with yeah what a difference uh, you know the second year makes just so much stability in the front office stability on the coaching staff and then you could see that they added more talent and a lot of guys were still learning the new offense last year that's not the case they're more plug and play guys and cardinals are excited about what their roster looks like going into the season well speaking of the roster there are some important decisions that now need to be made over the next 24 48 hours the cardinals currently with 74 on the roster and they need to get down to 53 by Saturday afternoon. And, of course, you can bring back 16 to the practice squad. But these are going to be some tough decisions, especially that back end of the roster. Yeah, and that's something the Cardinals have done over the years under Steve Kime is, is whoever the, you know, the last guy at a certain position, he wants to turn that roster over now. In this case, I think it, it's safe to say that Cliff Kingsbury said to the media um, that they know who the 53-man roster is. Now it's a matter of... They want to get some of these guys to clear waivers and they can bring them back on the practice squad. And it's unusual because usually you have scouts at preseason games, uh, the Cardinals on the road, and then you have scouts here. And that, you know, a guy that played well in the fourth quarter of a preseason game, Dennis Gardeck, has done it, you know, over the years and it's earned a spot. So I think the Cardinals would like to retain a lot of those guys that are going to get released. Of course, they got to clear waivers. And really it comes down to a numbers game. Steve Kine mentioned that. You know, they're going to have some tough choices at three different positions. Running back, obviously, do you keep three or four, you know, at the linebacker spot, in particular inside linebacker, and then the secondary. How many DBs do you keep referring to cornerbacks and safety? But I think going into the camp, they had an idea who the top 48 players were. Yeah, according to Kingsbury earlier today, quote, roster-wise, it's pretty close to being set. So we await those decisions, which will come up this weekend coming up on today's show here on cars camp central powered by cox we will hear from defensive coordinator vance joseph mj will give his top three most anticipated matchups of the 2020 regular season had a chance to sit down with dennis gardeck a more swole dennis gardeck i'll let him explain what he meant by that. We'll play a round of hot takes. Darren Urban sits down with DeAndre Hopkins. We get to know a little bit more about Kyler Murray. And, of course, your questions, what's on the mind of the Red Sea? First things first, though, the news of the day, and really excited about this, the newest episode, the latest episode of Cardinals Flight Plan debuting this weekend, Sunday, September 6th, on the Cardinals' official YouTube page. Here's a sneak peek. Yeah, so we're the Wild Hogs. Basically, I'm one fourth of the Wild Hogs. The members of the Hogs are me, Justin Pugh, Mason Cole, and J.R. Sweet. I'm about to whoop you on camera right now. I'm about to whoop you on camera. This is where I be. This is where I be snatching off right here. Go top speed to the hill and catch me a breeze going down. <laughs> People like six packs, people like eight packs even, you know, and they're cool to look at. But a party ain't a party without a keg, baby. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? <laughs> oh, lie, we all about having fun. We, that's like our main objective. Other than whooping people, we trying to have some fun. <laughs> Gotta love it. The wild hogs. It should be mentioned that those scooters, gifts by Kyler Murray, who gave them to the offensive lineman at the end of last season. So uh, those have been uh, pretty prevalent around between the hotel and here at State Farm Stadium. Yeah, I did see general manager Steve Kime riding around on one. And, uh, you know, somebody 
guys take the golf cart to get over back to the stadium here, State Farm Stadium. But it's amazing these guys can probably buy anything they want. But when they get a gift like this, and if this team can get to the postseason and win some playoff games, maybe Rolexes are in the mix for next year. Well, how about this? Forget the offensive lineman. How about you and I? Craig, I no? do, we just stay in our lanes here. <laughs> Again, the latest episode. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking. I though. try. The latest episode of Cardinals Flight Plan this Sunday on the official YouTube page of the Arizona Cardinals for much more on what the Cardinals have been doing here at training camp and State Farm Stadium. All right, let's turn our attention now to the defense. Vance Joseph beginning his second year with the team and by all accounts on paper, a much improved defense, at least where we stand right now. Of course, it wasn't the defense, but the offense that was the first topic of conversation Coach Joseph had with Paul Calvisi and Ron Wolfley during the red and white practice. Thanks for joining us. And I'm just curious, what is it like as a D coordinator trying to scheme, even though it's practice, I get it, right. but to go against Cliff and Kyler and that offense? It's fun. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a wide open offense. It challenges you, uh, you know, run game and pass game alike. It's a, it's a lateral offense. So, you know, with our team speed, it's tough to uh, match up every every personnel group. So, it's a it's a tough out, you know, with uh, Cliff's offense. So Vance, with no preseason, mm -hmm. man, I just that is a mind numb. Every time right. I think about it, it blows my mind. How right. difficult is it for you to evaluate what you're seeing? It's uh it's tough because games, you know, games is where we kind of see the final product, you know, of players. But obviously, you know, practice, it's it's been competitive and uh. We've got guys working hard and making plays. So, you know, after you know after the draft and free agency, adding the players that we've added, it's going to be tough to pick our final players. So, that's a good thing, you know, adding more players. Uh, but you know, it's competitive, and we do the best we can to kind of figure out the uh, best uh, guys for the defense. As a coach, do you err on the side of the known versus the unknown? An experienced guy versus perhaps an undrafted rookie, just because of the situation? Absolutely. You know, guys that. That you had uh, with your last season is always a better option because you know it's the, it's it's their second year in the system you know and Buddha Chandler all those guys who played with us last year it's their first time in the same system in in the uh, in two straight seasons so it's going to help us to have our same guys back doing the same job in the same system. Was your install interrupted at all because of all the new faces right now? I, I mean, I can't even imagine all the new weapons right. you have on the defensive side of the ball. Did it impact your install at all? A little. You know, we took it slower this year, and it, it's, it's the same as the lockout year. You know, uh, mm. being with Wade down in Houston, we kind of installed all year. You know, but we started very simple and coach fundamentals and coaching guys to get in great shape and do the small things, you know, and that's – that's how we started in Houston, and it worked out for us. And it's it's been the same here. You know, as we go along in the season, we're at more scheme, but right now it's 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 straight fundamentals, guys. We just saw a shot earlier of Isaiah Simmons, yeah. and I think everyone wants to know on your first round rookie how much <laughs> impact can he make? How soon? We'll see. You know, he's he's a bright guy. He's obviously long, and he can run. So we'll see how much uh, he can grasp before week one. What do you what can you tell us about Dre Kirkpatrick, coach? Well, he's a guy I had as a as a young guy in Cincy. He's a he's a long corner that can really run. He's he's competitive. He's smart, and he wants to get his name back. You know, so it's a it's a it's a great pickup by Steve Kime and his staff because Dre is a motivated veteran, and uh, when guys are motivated, that's the perfect uh, storm. Speaking of motivation, what do you see in your other corner, Patrick Peterson, so far? He's been he's been so focused. You know, from uh. The last four games of last year to now, man, he's he's been a focused guy, and I'm expecting big things from Patrick. Vance, you're working. We just want to thank you for your time, man. God bless you, buddy. Thanks, guys. All right, okay. enjoy it. There you go, defensive coordinator Vance Joseph. I think we're all expecting big things from Patrick Peterson, and it's going to be nice to have him available for the entire season. Well, we know he's got a chip on his shoulder. Some say a boulder. He's motivated. He feels like maybe people are – you know, doubting him a little bit. I look at body of work, and I'm betting on Patrick Peterson and Dre Kirkpatrick. That was a great find. He's, he's a guy that obviously has the length, 6'2", 190. He can play on the outside, allows Brian Murphy to play inside. I'm really excited about the secondary now. Every team is going to have to deal with injuries and depth, but I like the starters going into the season. And it was interesting to hear Coach Joseph bring up the known versus the unknown when it comes to these roster decisions that are coming up 
in a matter of days, if not hours, because, you know, you want to keep the guys that have been in the system as opposed to maybe breaking in a lot of new faces. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting. We think the Cardinals could keep four or five corners. We know who the top three are, and now it's a matter of Kevin Peterson and Chris Jones. They've been in the system for over a year. Um, they got a chance to play a little bit last year, and, and you need some depth on the roster. So um, at least those guys know the system, what they're expected to do. Obviously, you're much better with the top three. All right. Now, speaking of the top three, how about Mike Jarecki's top three most anticipated games of the 2020 regular season? What's number one on your list? Number one on my list is the opener. Now you're going to say, well, okay, they still have 15 games to go, but I think it sets the tone for this season. The Cardinals play the Niners toe to toe last year. A lot of people think they should have swept them. I'll take, I would have split right there. And this is, to me, a pivotal game. The Cardinals need to start winning on the road. they got to win division games. they got to win conference games because at the end of the year, it's going to go down to the, how many conference wins you have. So I, I think it sets a tone. Maybe we had this conversation a few years ago when they came off a good season and they played the New England Patriots and they didn't have Gronk, they didn't have Brady, and the Cardinals lost that game. And some thought it derailed the entire season. Hopefully that's not the case. And then I want to go to the Monday night game in week six against the Dallas Cowboys. We know Kyler Murray's played in that stadium. Kingsbury's going back there. It's Monday night football. They do things big in Dallas. So another a conference game and a team that's probably going to be on the cusp of making the playoffs, if not getting deep into the postseason. So the fact that the Cardinals have a chance on national TV to put, you know go in there and upset the Cowboys, I'm looking forward to that now. I avoided the Seattle Seahawks, and for one reason is because they usually win at State Farm Stadium. The Cardinals win up there. I'm going to Week 17 against the Los Angeles Rams. And Jumping since, way ahead. Yes, since Sean McVay's been there, they've been the hammer. The Cardinals have been the nails. I think the Cardinals can jump them in the division this year. So I think Week 17, meaningful football, you have to win that game. And I think if you get to somewhere nine wins, that could be, put you in the playoff picture. So weeks one, six, and 17, I'm going to throw out two other weeks, and it's back-to-back -back weeks that the Cardinals are going to be on the road at Seattle, at New England, weeks 10, excuse me, weeks 11 and 12. Seattle, it's always been a place that the Cardinals have had success going up there and winning. And then you got to go across country and face a New England team that, at least right now, We'll have a new quarterback. Well, we know it's going to have a new quarterback. No Tom Brady, but Cam Newton, your likely starter. And then we get that matchup that we were supposed to have last season here at State Farm Stadium with the Carolina Panthers, Kyler Murray against Cam Newton. Yeah, and you're talking, once again, facing the number one pick in the draft. We went through that with Baker Mayfield. Obviously, you know, you look at some other first-round quarterbacks, you know, between, uh, you know, Lamar Jackson. So, um, it's a situation where, yeah, there's going to be a lot of storylines, but it's an AFC game. You know, hopefully the Cardinals can either split or win three out of four there. That's going to be a daunting game. I think they got a really good defense. Obviously, Cam Newton is, is a high-profile quarterback here, so see how they use him. He can run a little bit. So I'm looking forward to the matchup, but I still are focusing more on the NFC games. Yeah, the storyline that week is going to be an easy one to follow all week long as far as the two quarterbacks are concerned when we talk about the Cardinals going to the Patriots. All right, let's switch gears. As we mentioned at the top of the show, roster cuts are looming. Three years ago, Dennis Gardeck was among those players anxiously waiting to see if he had made the team. He did, and he's made a nice mark with this team in the two seasons he has played. Now about to enter his third year in the NFL, had a chance to catch up with Gardeck earlier this week. Well, first things first here, Dennis, I got to ask your third NFL training camp. Do you feel like a veteran yet? Uh, no, I'm still still waiting for that that to set in. Um, still feeling like uh, I got everything to prove. At what point do you think that will ever change for you or will it always be that case? I, I hope it doesn't ever change. I don't I don't ever want to feel like I've arrived. So I, I hope it never changes. Well, speaking of changes, there have been a couple of changes with you with this team this season. Let's go in order. The number change, third number change in as many years from 92 yeah. to 45 and now 42. Do numbers mean anything to you? Um, not, not really. I don't think it matters. Um, I did kind of like 42, 
but I, I was more than happy to give it to DK. Um, he, he's a veteran that I've been around for a while. We've trained in the off season together. Um, so I was more than happy to give him 42. And I think 45 looks pretty good. I think I look a little bit more built in it. I don't know, it could just, uh, could just be in my mind, but I'm, I'm kind of liking 45. So the, the numbers fit, fill out the jersey a little bit? Make I don't know. Bad. I just feel a little bit more swole in 45. Huh? It, it could be in my head. It, it, it might not. All right. Well, when a veteran does come in and, and takes a number, typically there's some deal, some arrangement. Have you guys discussed anything? Uh, we've discussed. Um, it, it, I don't think it's going to be anything too taxing either way. Um it's going to be a good conversation. I, I know he got married this past off season. That's been one of his strong arguments. Um, but, but it, it's, it's not, it's not a big deal. I was more than happy to give it to him. He didn't take it. I was more than happy to give it to him. Well, you two now are in the same position room as far as the switch from inside to outside linebacker. How has that gone for you? Uh, I think it's gone really well. Um, Inside, there's there's a lot. You got to get everybody kind of lined up and um, know all the formations and, and being able to, to fall back with gaps and everything. Um, being on the edge, everything's kind of coming at you from one direction. Um, I think that's allowed me to play my brand of football, which is fast, physical, hair on fire. Um, whatever's going to happen is going to happen really fast. Um, so I've really enjoyed it, and I've been having a lot of fun out there. I heard you earlier say that in college, that's the position you played. So maybe this is the, the, the transition really happened when you first got to the league going from outside to inside. Yeah. Yeah. I always played on, um, on the edge, not necessarily always on the ball, um, but more of like an overhang type position. Um, so it, it feels a lot more familiar now. And I think, um, just being in year three also kind of helps where the game starts to slow down a little bit uh, has allowed me to play faster. You've also done great work on special teams. How much pride do you take in that aspect of your game? Uh, every opportunity to get on the field is um, something I take pride in. It doesn't matter if it's a kickoff that's a touchback or, 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 or what the situation is. It's an opportunity to get, to get out on the field. Um, and I'm going to be the best that I can for each and every one of those snaps. Curious, you made this team as an undrafted rookie free agent in 2018, a lot because of what you were able to show everyone during preseason. There is no preseason this year. Curious if you've had that moment to step back and say, what if you were in that situation and didn't have that opportunity of preseason games? Yeah, it was something I thought a lot about um, while we were still in our own kind of quarantined workout um, where, where I was trying to compare like, man, these meetings, it, it, not so much on the field, but the meetings and being able to, to ask how, how things are done or, or what the terminology is and all, all that stuff was missed. And there, you can get some of it through the Zoom. Um, but I felt for them a lot during that that period. And now I feel like guys are finding ways and opportunities to separate themselves by asking good questions, by being on top of all their stuff when we are out on the field. Um, just, just finding ways to compete in whatever way possible. Do you find yourself kind of looking more at what they're doing? I know there's only four left on the team, but once training camp began to do you pay attention to those guys that you guys kind of have a, a same kinship? Uh, we got we got one undrafted guy, uh, Reggie Walker, in our room, and I've kind of tried to help him out as much as I can. Um, I, I do have a have a soft spot for the undrafted guys because um, only only the guys that have been through that process really understand what it's like. Leave me with this. Last year, the Cardinals nominated you as their Salute to Service Award uh, nominee uh, based off all of your community work. Mm -hmm. uh, how much do you enjoy away from the football, away from the action, getting out and about in the community? Yeah, uh, that, that's my reset. 
that's that's how I kind of regroup and refocus is being able to take the attention off myself. Um, it really helps me. It, it, it seems counterintuitive, but when, when you make sure somebody else is okay, um, you're, you're always going to be all right. So being able to put my time and energy into, into helping other people has really actually helped me with my, my energy levels throughout the week. Um, so I'm going to continue to find ways to stay active in the community. Well, keep up the good work, Dennis. Appreciate a couple of minutes here on Cards Camp Central, powered by Cox. Best of luck this season. All right. Thank you. I love it. Gardak says he feels more swole wearing that 45. Maybe that's what we need for you, MJ, to put get a jersey on you so you can feel like you fill out a little bit more. Well, I mean, even if I wore <laughs> shells, I would still be, be this skinny. So I, once again, I'll just do commentary. But, you know, uh, what, a, what a story there. Obviously, an undrafted free agent from a small school, and he's, he's been able to stick on the roster. But if you follow the Arizona Cardinals, what he does off the field, he is the majority doing charity work, and obviously sometimes it's through Zoom. But, I mean, it's just a great story, and you root for guys like that. Absolutely. Now, with regard to the position switch to outside linebacker, 6'2", 232. So he does not have the size of a typical outside linebacker. So he's he's really up against it as far as if he wants to play some more defense this year. Yeah, and he's playing outside linebacker. And if you look at a guy like Kylie Fitz, he's like 6'4", 260. And right now I think he's on the depth chart after Chandler Jones and Kennard. Then you throw in Hassan Reddick and, and Dennis Gardeck. You know, they're 6 feet, 6'2", 235 pounds max. So, um, But, again, he's got a heart of a line. And Reddick, you know, obviously probably not going to be on the roster next year, but he's got an opportunity to put himself on film. And I do think at some point in the season you're going to see him in sub packages. Yeah, best of luck to Gardeck this season. All right, time for hot takes, red hot or icy cold. Are you ready, MJ? I'm ready. All right, first one. The Cardinals will carry seven wide receivers on the 53-man roster. Icy cold. Cold? Why? Yes. I think they keep six. And I think they, if it comes to fruition, I think they'll slide a couple guys on the practice squad. So uh, the top six guys, in my opinion, in any order, Fitzgerald, we know the top three, Fitzgerald, Hopkins, Kirk, and then I'll throw in Isabella, Sherfield, Keyshawn Johnson. I'm going to push back a little bit because we know Kingsbury wants to throw the football. Isn't more weapons better? Like I said, they all, we didn't mention the tight end, Dan True. Arnold and Max Williams. Then you got Kenyon Drake and, and Chase Edmonds. So I do think they want to spread it out, and that's why we could see them keep six. Curious to see how many active wide receivers on game day. We know Sherfield and, and some of those guys that are not in the top three, they're going to play on special teams, so they should be active on game day. I think that might be one of the bigger questions heading into these looming roster decisions, the number of wide receivers that are kept on the 53-man roster. All right, speaking of wide receivers, next hot take. DeAndre Hopkins will score at least one touchdown in week one against the 49ers. Uh, I'm going with the hot take there, red hot. So I'm going to go a Hopkins. Uh, one touchdown is not asking for a lot. I anticipate a good target of between six and nine times. Uh, they do have a good secondary, starting with Richard Sherman. They got a good front rush, but we know the Cardinals match up with the San Francisco 49ers, so I will give him one touchdown, uh, maybe less than 80, 85 yards, but he will find the end zone. I even think he might find the end zone a couple of times, especially if the offense can get on a little bit of roll week one at San Francisco. All right, the final hot take, red hot or icy cold, the Cardinals will make the playoffs this season. Red hot, and the reason why I talked about it earlier, if this team can get to nine wins, and that means you have to win division games, you got to scratch out some road wins, and they got to play much better at home. I know that I'm discounting the AFC, but those games count also. But I think if they get to week 17, because the Rams last year were 9-7. and seven. The Rams have come off three consecutive winning seasons. Now this year there's a seventh team added in each conference. So the Rams would have got in last year at 9-7. and seven. I believe the Cardinals can get in at 9-7. and seven. You know how it wor works, Craig? Play meaningful football in December, maybe you get to 10, and all of a sudden you move up in the division. Certainly not going to be easy in what might be the toughest division in all of football, talking about the NFC West, but uh, if the Cardinals are to make the postseason for the first time in 2015, it's certainly likely that DeAndre Hopkins is going to have, if not a good season, but a great season ahead. 
And with Hopkins now in the fold, Darren Urban, our colleague, azcardinals.com, had a chance to slow down the all-pro and Pro Bowl wide receiver earlier here in training camp. Obviously, your mom, you're very close to your mom, your family. They've been able to attend the games. Have you thought much about what it might be like to not be able to have them at games for you? Yeah, I have. Uh, you know, this will be a first for everyone, uh, not just myself, but also other families. I'm pretty sure they attend all their kids' games. So it's something that we have to adjust to, something that my family is looking forward to watching at home, being together around each other. And I think it'll, you know, it'll, it'll be a good thing to have everyone together at, at the house, you know, kind of tailgate, uh, have, you know, a party around the games. Now that you've been around Kyler in person for a number of weeks now, what, what stands out uh, about him to you? Kyler is a guy that if someone messes up, he's going to go over there and tell them what they need to do. And vice versa, he's, he's able to take criticism. And I think that's what all great players have. And I think that's something that he want to become uh, great at, you know, is, 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 you know, being a great player, but also, you know, being able to see our side of things and us see his side of things and, and be on the same page. But what sticks out to me is obviously his arm, how strong of an arm he has and, and his drive to be great uh, to win. Have you been able to see the innovation of what Cliff Kingsbury does in his playbook yet uh, from what you've been around enough? And, and how might that help you on the field? I think, you know, just from what I've seen on film from those guys last year, the games that they won, this is an offense that I'm very excited to be in, uh, you know, especially in my position. It's definitely an offense that's unique. Uh, and, you know, for guys like myself, it's, it's an offense that you want to be in. You've mentioned your relationship with Larry Fitzgerald long before you got here. How did you guys get hooked up? Is it one of those things where great ride receivers find each other? Uh, it came about of, of my appreciation for the game of football, the appreciation for the receiver position. Uh, Larry was a guy that I remember when, you know, they made a playoff run and, you know, they got close but not close enough. I felt bad. I, I you know, I was basically a Cardinals fan from, from that day uh, because I seen the drive and I wanted Larry to win a championship. Well, my appreciation for Larry, you know, it's, it's, has always been um, the utmost um, respect for a guy that handles his business, not just on the field, but off the field. So, you know, being able to be around someone like that in the locker room is very valuable. When we talk about DeAndre Hopkins, not the football player, uh, how does DeAndre Hopkins describe that? I would say DeAndre Hopkins is someone that's interested in fashion, interested in travel, uh, interested in food, uh, and also, you know, outdoors. I'm, I'm an I'm a outdoorsy, you know, person. I grew up in South Carolina in the foothills. So uh, fishing uh, is, you know, something that, you know, I've done my whole life. So being in Arizona is, is definitely a place that reminds me of back home. Good knowledge there. Did not know D-Hop liked to fish. We know head coach Cliff Kingsbury likes to fish as well. So maybe a fishing trip is on the horizon for the head coach and wide receiver. We certainly know that Hopkins is expected to be a key point, key piece, I should say, within this offense. And it's Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins. That is where the focus is going to be initially. And I think that is certainly the talking point because of what those two could do for each other. Yeah, for a long, long time now. Obviously, Hopkins under contract three more years. Uh, so at some point, obviously, they've had that conversation. Now, when you look at what he brings to the offense, the Cardinals can line up and run the ball because I know it's a passing league, but this, this offense is predicated on being able to run the football. So if they want to spread him out, he gets separation. They finally have an X receiver. And just go back to the offseason, Craig, where we talked about you know, the team needing a number one wide receiver. And a lot of people thought that would come in the draft with the eighth overall pick. They solidified that. It's going to go down, in my opinion, as one of the top three trades in Steve Kimes' history. Carson Palmer, just because quarterback, obviously Chandler Jones, pass rusher. But you got to put this in, and even Kenyon Drake. So I think just having him on the field, teams are going to have to roll coverage over, and I think it's going to open up for other guys. Yeah, certainly really looking forward to the pairing of Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins week one at San Francisco. All right, more Murray this time. How about we get to know the second-year quarterback just a little bit more and something we like to call before the snap. Michael Vick, eight, 
Uh, see, people don't really like Applejack. I'm gonna go Honeycombs. Xbox, uh, NBA 2K. I don't want to disrespect anybody. <laughs> uh, LeBron, I hear LeBron. Skittles, dogs, uh, Greg Gatsby. I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> I couldn't tell you that one. <laughs> That's, uh, that's tough. I got, hopefully I got a lot of options. Good stuff there from Murray. All right, let's now hear from the Bird Gang. The Red Sea wants to know, MJ, I got a couple of questions for you. Number one, outside of Isaiah Simmons, tell me which rookie will have the biggest impact this season. Well, I think it's probably going to be Richard Lawrence. Now, the Cardinals do have a couple of run stuffers. If Josh Jones was in the equation, but, you know, right now he's hopefully red shirts this year because of the depth they have on the offensive line. I like Lucky uh, Futo. Foto. Foto, thank you, excuse me. Um, but I think Rashad Lawrence can do a little bit more. They're going to try to move him around more. I think Evan Weaver it could be a special teams demon, a guy that goes down and covers kicks. I don't know how much he'll play on teams, but I would go Rashad Lawrence just because they think he's more than just a nose tackle or a D tackle. Yeah, certainly a big physical presence inside. All right, last question, and this is something that has been discussed amongst coaches and players all training camp. How much of a challenge will the lack of preseason games be for the Cardinals? Well, uh, the good news is Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray are, are not in their first year in the system. So you, you got five new coaches come to mind. A couple of guys have been rehired and Ron Rivera, and, and then you, you, you throw in um, – Mike McCarthy. So you got new coaches in Cleveland, Kevin Stefanski, you got Matt Rule in Carolina, and then you throw in Joe Judge in New York. I think it's going to be more difficult if you're installing a brand new system. Some of these teams have younger quarterbacks and Dwayne Haskins and Daniel Jones. So I think if you're a team that's been intact for at least a year going into your second season, it won't be uh, that much effect. But keep an eye on the first month of the season because I think we're going to see tackling could be an issue, possibly penalties because there was no referees to preseason games and usually referees come to camp every year unfortunately weren't able to travel folks that's a wrap next stop the regular season 10 days from today cardinals at san francisco week one i'm jacked up as cliff said the party's over now time to focus on the regular season and that's exactly what we will do want to thank everyone for putting this show together not only today but throughout training camp here cards camp central powered by cox it's been a lot of fun and as it's become a custom here on the last show of the week how about we feature once again team photographer derek spencer something we like to call through the lens bird gang Here's to an outstanding 2020 season.